For example, this MIDI controller right here is just operating the first uh, eight faders. Remember to like and subscribe. Hey, how's it going guys? This is Jay with Kinetic and today's video we are going over MIDI controllers with Yamaha QLCL consoles. A couple weeks ago I saw a post online talking about uh, like Allen and Heath boards being able to have like fader expansions and I thought that was really cool and I think a lot of people miss the flexibility that Yamaha has with MIDI. Their programming flexibility with MIDI is pretty expansive and you can do a lot. For example, this MIDI controller right here is just operating the first uh, eight faders. And on this one, this is an older MIDI controller I had. This is broken, but you can make the encoders as well. And another thing I thought was cool is we can do momentary buttons. So say I'm doing offstage announcements and I can just hold that down, make that announcement. And let's, I don't want this to be like a, you should just do it. Cause obviously if I am in a different bank and I move this fader that's assigned to channel one, I'm not seeing any of the data on the screen, right? But maybe non-essentials like, like an iPad up and down or offstage announcements, something that isn't super crucial, but you would love to have had an extra fader. You totally can do that. And for me, the workflow would be like, I have my mics, I have my playback graphics, maybe handles on my PA. And now I have some extra faders here for, you know, my iPad or QLab or an offstage announcement. And it's really simple, really flexible. And if we look inside uh, the MIDI options here, you'll see everything is based on a control change value. And on this controller, all I did was assign uh, control change values to the faders and the knobs and the buttons. Here uh, in this left field is the control change number. And then we're going to select what is going to happen with that control change value. So control change number one is going to be uh, channel two fader high. And that's just because uh, channel one is broken on the controller. And that's why I started it there. So it gives you a high and a low value, but we don't need one if there's just one value with this controller. So I assigned it to fader high. And if I go here, works as it should. And then uh, MIDI control change number 16, I assigned to this encoder for the same thing. So because this fader is broken. And you can go in depth on it. The, the options are pretty extensive. They're even greater than what a user defined key could give you. You can go into your graphic EQs, turn things on and off, make really intricate decisions over MIDI. And that's because the entire console is based off of MIDI commands. Um, I want to dig in deeper on this and kind of implement it into my workflow and get obviously something better than this, which also brings me to another cool thing. This is a USB MIDI controller. How I'm implementing that is with the door MIDI host. So this takes in a USB MIDI controller over USB and spits out standard MIDI. And I'm using the MIDI out of this to the MIDI in on this console. And you guys could see on the door MIDI host, when I give a MIDI command, it's reading that and showing me it's receiving it. So that way we can use any USB MIDI controller to control the MIDI actions within this console. And again, this is just kind of a demo, me playing around, but I'm going to expand on that in the future. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe.